hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl so a day and as you guys have seen today we're gonna to be talking about some unpopular things i actually was thinking of what video is gonna come up tomorrow so day 18 i'm filming this thing in the night <laughs> and i was thinking about what video is gonna come up and i was like you know what i think i have some ideas and i went to my draft from as far back as let me even check let me actually check in real time when i wrote this so this is june 2021 this is June 20th. I don't know if it's going to focus, but that is June 2021. And so today, we're going to be talking about my unpopular opinions. Maybe they will drag me like Maraji. Without further ado, let's get right into the video, okay? And we're going to start with the first thing on my list. I'm going to just go through it according to how it's on my list, right? I think as at this time in 2021, there was a discourse on there always is a discourse, not, not particularly in the Nigerian um, media space. The thing I wrote here is 17, dating 18 or 19 is in grooming. So I think I saw maybe something on Twitter in the probably in the white space, the Caucasian space, where they were like, yeah, why is the 17 year old dating the 19 year old? Um, the 17 year old is not a minor, the 19 year old is, is um, actually an adult, can vote and blah, 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 blah in some states. I do not particularly think it's wrong for a 17 year old. Actually, I do not in any way think it's wrong for a 17 year old to be dating a 19 year old. Why? Is it because I've done it? No. <laughs> ah! It's not because I've done it, but I feel like a 17-year-old and an 18-year-old, the 17 to 19-year-old age grade is basically the same set of people. Um, for example, one of the examples I gave in my voice notes was the fact that in my church, my parents shared my family church, the age grades are grouped for Sunday school and 17 to 19 is grouped together. Now, for like, how do you want the 17-year-old and the 19-year-old to not interact in a way where one person catches feelings or something and then something comes out of it. Secondly, the second thing is I entered school at the age of 15. I turned 16 after my matriculation. I was still in 100 level first semester, anyways. But yeah. So in that kind of scenario where I entered university at 15, in that same 100 level, I'm pretty sure that there were people that were 18 years old. Would you want to tell me that, oh, this person is by well, 100 level? So you people would look at it from the point of view that, oh, these are 100 level people, they should be able to mingle, right? Nobody looks at it from the fact that, oh, this is it. And something that I said in my voice notes was this. There's no 100-level junior, 100-level senior, right? So there's no 100-level 15-year-old, 40-year-old. There was actually a 14-year-old in my class. There's no 100-level 15-year-old, 100-level 18-year-old. You're all 100-level. Everybody classifies you as 100-level freshers. So you can mingle. And in that kind of situation, you end up dating people who are two, three years older than you, but you guys are on the same level in life. Probably not mindset-wise. But then again, probably mindset well because if that person is entering fresh 18, fresh out of high school, not necessarily because, oh, they failed jam multiple times and they have to rewrite. And this person is actually like, you guys finish secondary school at the same time, just that the person's age is higher. You are on the same level in life. Nobody can tell me otherwise. I don't see why anybody would think otherwise. It's different if you are talking about like a 16-year-old, you know, okay, that's a three-year-old, that's a three-year gap or a 15-year-old. Now that's a different scenario. But a 17, this is an 18 or 19-year-old. Then same age grade, regardless of oh, this one can buy beer, this one can drive or not. It's like they're the same people, okay? The second one is still about the grooming topic. So like let's just talk about the grooming topic finally. I think, and I don't know if it's because I used to be a WhatsApp babe. <laughs> I used to be a WhatsApp girly, and there's a book. So this, this book is not even a WhatsApp book, it's an actual book by an actual author. Not that I'm saying that the WhatsApp people are not actual authors, but yeah. Um, there was a book I read and it was about this man who met a young girl before she turned 18 and so he met this girl um at probably an, at an engagement or something like a party and she was under 18 and so this guy in no way did he try he didn't intend it wasn't an intentional thing of oh i'm gonna leave you alone until you're 18 it was like he stepped back right they were chanced enough to meet again and then when they met again he actually started pursuing her now do you know what my unpopular opinion is it is that leaving a minor alone until they are of age is not grooming. This topic has been rinsed and repeated on the internet, and I do not think it is the right thing to say. It is a different thing if I know that you are under the age of 18, right? And I want to respect that. There are people who don't respect that. They don't care. I want to respect the fact that you are under 18. And then I'm like checking up on you, texting you, um, buying you things, visiting you, hanging out with you, 
and now let's look at it from let's let's give it let's give it an age 18 year old and a 20 24 25 no that's under 18 so let's let's say a 16 year old and a 24 25 year old right okay 24 25 is actually high 22 year old so that's like a six year age gap let's use that now a 16 year old and a 22 year old now you made this person you like this person you're like oh i would like you, okay no See, now, if I say I wish this person was of age, now they will carry it too. They will carry it too. Because, like they said, you shouldn't wish that a younger person was mature enough to date you. But it is okay to see virtues in someone who is younger and be like, that's the virtue that I would like in a partner. Now, it's only okay if you don't pursue that person while they are a minor. Now, if you leave that person alone and you're like, if God wants this to be, let it be and we meet in the future and it works out that's cool it's different like i said if you're not like buying this person gifts showing up for this person like coming for their events and all that like just being all up in this person's face kind of trying to be like a constant in their life to the point where they feel dependent on you that now is grooming okay but if it's a thing where it's like okay you meet me at a party maybe when i was just, i was 16 years old we hung out, we had fun. You were like, oh my God, this girl is actually really, really nice. I like talking to her. I love the conversation and all of that. And it was cool. And then you left the party. You didn't get my number. You didn't follow me on any of my socials. Nothing like it was like ghost, right? Six years down the line, now you're 28. We were looking at 22, I'm 16, right? You're 28. I'm now 22 years old. We meet by chance, maybe. Or let's say you're my brother's friend. You're my older brother. Let's say I have, I have an older brother that's older than me with 26, with six years. Now, you're my older brother's friend, 22 years old. I'm graduating from the university. Um, we're doing a party at my house. My brother invites you. I don't know. Like, me and you have not kept in touch at all. My brother invites you over. You come over. You see me again. We have a conversation again. Like, oh, my God, I remember you. Da, 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 da. How have you been? I've not seen you in a long time. It's been six years. Wow. You're done with university now. You're a big girl, blah, blah, blah. Let me get your contact. That is not grooming. Because in no way did you try to prep me to be your girlfriend or your wife. You ghosted me. <laughs> you literally ghosted me. Do you understand? So it's not grooming. And I used to see this discourse a lot on Twitter. And I'm like, bro, he left the person alone. How is it grooming? Like, it's not. And I don't want to talk, talk too much on it because then I'll just, I'll just keep going around in circles. But I think I've made my major points known. Now we're going to go into something that's also a little bit controversial. It's not really controversial. I think it is, a lot of people actually um, subscribe to this mentality. If you as a woman, you have a husband, you have kids, you have daughters, particularly daughters, okay? And you are one of those mothers who is always telling your daughters... <laughs> that oh what you're wearing is too short don't you know there's a man in the house madam i'm so sorry to say but there is something in your husband that you do not want to accept because there is no reason why a man a father should be looking at his daughter in a way where it should be a problem for her to wear shorts now what let's talk about let's talk shorts in the house if i can't wear shorts in my house where else am i going to wear them the weather is like the weather is really hot right now. We're supposed to be in Hamatan City, but it's crazy hot. If I can't wear the shorts inside the house, where am I supposed to wear the shorts outside? Isn't that gonna be a bigger problem? Like, shouldn't you be telling me, oh, don't okay, don't wear shorts outside because like they're random men that you don't know. This is my father. Be fucking for real. Like that is a problem, and I feel like either there's a problem with your mentality or there's something in your husband that you know you're trying to hide you're trying to ignore it but you know it's there and for you to even have the thought that is a possibility that your husband seeing his daughter wearing shorts is going to be a problem or is going to affect him in any way you shouldn't be married to that person like let's let's like that is even another discourse on its own you shouldn't be married to a man who you think in the slightest is going to have the thoughts those thoughts about his daughter period point blank. like i don't even need to i don't do i need to explain i don't need to explain the next one the next one oh i said keeping a child that is pre-diagnosed pre-diagnosed pre now 
there are tests you can run there are tests that you're actually mandated to run i don't know about in this part of the country but in the other part of the country sorry but i don't know whether it's in this part of the world or like but like in the other part of the world it's almost like mandatory there's some tests you have to run for some diseases so that the doctors know how to prep for your delivery do they need oxygen do they need these things like they do the test i think there's some that they can see early on in the pregnancy there are some that you can see like mid pregnancy then later on in the pregnancy right there are some tests you have to run and when you run it they can tell you some things and things that your child might have keeping a child that is pre-diagnosed with a medical problem pre as pre i said pre pre pre-birth is selfish and wicked Mm. hallelujah hallelujah amen amen now the reason why i i wrote this one down i feel is because of a youtuber that i watch and i love who is based in australia if anybody i don't know if somebody might know her now she had the first first child she was she was pregnant with the second child she had some complications they did some tests they found out that the child had something now she hasn't come out to say what the child had but there's some looks the child has that you kind of know what they have what they were pregnant pre-diagnosed with now when she got the pre-diagnosis that's um, when i say pre-diagnosis i'm talking about pre-birth um it was like the doctors were advising termination they were look they were not, not not all of the doctors like the doctors were saying like you have the option to terminate or to keep and she decided to keep now post-birth this child has had I think three or multiple, multiple, because she has said that some were minor, some were major. Some were major to the point where she did, like, there were videos on it, there was YouTube videos, there were, I was following her on the streets, like, I love this YouTuber. And where the child would have episodes where he would stop breathing, he would turn blue. He had to go undergo so many procedures at one point. We moved from hospital to hospital, staying in hospital for multiple months, like, I'm sorry, multiple days, I think, weeks, maybe a few weeks, on end. And I just couldn't help but think, like, you were informed about these things. Mm. You were informed. Like, it's it's like, this is another point of mine, so I'm not going to go into it, but, like, it's like bringing a child into the world, like I said, is selfish. Because now you're doing it for yourself. Now, some people say, oh, this is another one. Ooh. I don't know. I'm getting emotional talking about this topic. It irks me. There are so many kids that need to be adopted, but we all want to have our own. We want to have our own. When you can die, do you know that you can die without picking? Oh shit! <laughs> There's a lady. They call her the lady with the list on TikTok, who documents everything that could go wrong in pregnancy. The things that happen to you that are irre- irre- irreversible. You could stop walking forever. You could lose your sight. You could lose all your hair. Your body will change and it will never be the same. Mm. But no, we all want to burn our own. I understand the joy of having your own. But you already have one. Sister, you already have one. So why would you bring a child into the world knowing fully well that this child will have complications? I honestly feel like if asthma was a pre-diagnosable um, condition, any person that has a child with asthma should be killed. Ooh! By hanging. In short, no. By fire. Burnt in fiery furnace. Oh, shit. I'm so pissed. Because why would you bring a child into this world so that the child can throughout their life be suffering? Any small time, the child can fall on the ground and it cannot breathe. And they have to use it to breathe. Why? Tell us why we are surprised. Oh, Jesus. I am so pissed. Like, I'm vibrating in the middle of my chest. Like, the whole topic of intentionally intentionally bringing someone into the world to suffer is the has is the is the depth mm, is the depth of wickedness like i can't even begin to at where do i start where do i stop like i can't even begin to speak on it and because it's going to get long let me just move to the next one which is similar to this one marrying someone that you know carries a sickle cell trait. I want yes, at yes. Mm-hmm. 
And there are some tests you can do. You could be AA and you have a redundant S sickle cell trait in you. Are you gonna marry? That's why AA should marry. We should marry ourselves, shouldn't we? We should. We should be selfish. Let's just kick them all off the earth. Why should we? Why do we still have sickle cell carriers in this day and time of technology and tests that could be taken? When I hear people that, oh, that child died from sickle cell complications, I get angry. Because Especially when it's like a younger couple, not even as, as I, I think even as my as I my parents got married, I think people were aware of the ASASD. So if anybody in my parents' age grade should have a sickle cell child, they're a bastard. And I will not take back my word. I will not. Because you knew. You knew. And you said, oh, you know what I wrote here? Let me let me read what I said. Marrying someone you know is AS when you are also AS. I'm, believe, I'm believing that God will make a way. It's a crime punishable by death. You knew. You knew. Do you know what it is to live with sickle cell? Ah, nobody living with sickle cell will ever make the mistake of marrying someone with a sickle cell trait because they know what they have gone through. That is if they can even bear the burden of having kids because of how delicate their immune system is. And somebody will stay down and be like, don't worry, God will make a way. I'm, I'm so, I'm so angry. I have no feelings. <laughs> like, They made they not born any of my friends where me they try and ah me personally I will push you down the staircase. You are a bastard. In short, you will never marry the person first. First of all, the first thing I will ask anybody that comes to meet me when they want to marry now is what is your genotype? What's your husband genotype? Oh my favorite topic. My favorite topic that makes me less annoyed. <laughs> my favorite topic in the world is arranged marriages. I don't know why everybody is every time I say it, people just like their body is to boil. The same way my body is to boil for the things that are proper. Their body boards for things that are not that significant. Why do you think arranged marriage is a bad thing? Now, you have people, you have parents, most of your parents, let's not even kill ourselves, most of your parents' marriages were arranged marriages and they learned to love each other. Now they love each other more than anything in the world. Why can't I do it? Tell us why we're surprised. Why, can't, why, why, am, why am I not allowed to do it? It's a free world. I don't want to be, I don't want to be burdened. I feel I see there's a point. Uh, recently, someone was talking to me and they were like, oh, they mentioned me, my boyfriend, or something like that. And I was like, what's that? And I was like, I don't have one. And I said, what do I need eat for? He was so flabbergasted. He said, what do you mean by eat? <laughs> what do I call boyfriend eat? Because what am I using it for? Like, let's be, for, let's, let's be real. That thing is headache now. It's headache. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. It's not headache. You die in a relationship, you do not hear it. Don't used to cry some nights. Why should I willingly subscribe to crying tears? Hey, but again, I understand the whole, oh, you should go through it now. But I've gone through it. I've gone through it. I've seen it. I've seen it all. The only thing that is not done to me is shit on me that will make me cry. Personally, I don't even have the attention span for it. Like, my attention span is so, so small. Small thing like this. You will just not talk to me for two hours and I've met somebody else. That is so sad to say, but that's the reality of me. My attention span is so little. Like I've never met someone that will actually make me. When they are more nigger, I go to work every day. There's this particular subcontractor we have. Ah, oh, the men, those people employ. I think every morning, like I still thought about it this morning. I was going to, when I was entering like the compound and I saw one person. I was like, it seems like one of their criteria to employ guys is like beauty. Like handsomeness, like their facial features. They picked this, they selected the crop, the creme de la creme, the crop of the crops, the beautiful of the beautiful. <laughs> and so, when there are those many men, why should I pick one? When I can change it every two weeks, I use it again. <laughs> like, actually, when I use it, it actually makes me laugh as well. But yeah, when I can change them every two weeks, why should I pick one? 
Okay. Oh. I'm... Okay, we're talking about something juicy right now. I see a lot of discourse, especially on TikTok um, and Twitter actually, where it's like someone posts a picture of themselves in certain attires or something, and the next thing everybody is in like is in the comments putting like rainbows or like being very homophobic. What I would say is, a person's sexuality is not your fucking business. We are in 2023. The world is ending. Face your salvation, okay? When you face your when you have gotten to heaven. When you are secure, like you've landed, you are by the side of Jesus, then can you? In short, even then, you have no rights. The Bible says you're not the one to, you're not the one, hey, you're not the judge. God is the judge. You judging them is a sin. And so, why not just mind your sexuality, mind who you are sleeping with? I saw that thing, actually, another one thing I always think of is like, she, you, do you think there's a sin that is greater than the other? So why can't you mind your salvation, like, get into heaven first, like, stand by the side of Jesus? And so, even then, gone, you cannot, you need no rights, there is no right on heaven, uh, on earth and in heaven that give, that God has given you to judge someone. God is the only judge, the ultimate judge. But the next so, one yeah. is cultural. I told you, I mentioned Maraji at the beginning because I knew that she was my, I said, Maraji said nothing wrong in the video she did. These, those that bothered are only so touched because of their conscience. I don't think there's any need to let me to discuss now. The last thing we have here <laughs> I don't know why I did this one it's not controversial. I don't think I've never had a conversation about it. Well I feel like oh I have had a conversation about it. I feel like it's important, it's very very important to have a relationship at work. Yeah. Yeah I do. I do. A work relationship, top ten. If you're not married though, who can be being work husband work wife? Your wife is divorced, you don't sit to say do. So I did not stay though. So I did single baby. Hmm. It's important to have a work relationship. Like I don't want to expose myself, but like yeah, just do it. It's like it's fun. It makes like what I told my friends is this when they asked me and what talking about it. I said having a work relationship is very very fun in the sense that you get excited to go to work. You are so happy because then you're going to see, you're going to see someone like. And then, and then again, if you guys are not working in the same unit or something, like you get excited because of the fact that oh, I'm gonna have a glimpse of this person. It's so fun and it m makes you excited. That, but like yeah, work is so boring sometimes, and you should just have that excitement. Like you guys can have lunch together, and even if that lunch is the only time you see, and you guys can sit down, have lunch, and like example, for example, now where I work, like you just go to the canteen and then we just start gossiping about our workmates. Like ah, is that not fun? Doesn't that sound fun? Or like even if we cannot have lunch together because like, we're both busy. After work, we just punch each other in the and like start talking for like four hours. Like, you know what this guy did today? Like, ah, oh no, my god, this is really for to. It's interesting. So, yes, um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys think what I said makes sense, and what you what do you agree with, what don't you agree with, let me know in the comment section. And with that being said, I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.